This is video number two in a series on the basic principles and duties for real estate professionals. Even though these videos are designed for the purpose of continuing education for Wisconsin real estate licensees, they may help you as a consumer to understand some real estate rules that professional salespersons and brokers must abide by. Hello again, I'm attorney Robert Flessis. If you're new to this channel, now is the best time to subscribe because if you do subscribe, you'll know where to go to get answers to your legal questions. In this video, I'll talk about the duties that real estate professionals owe to all parties to a transaction. This series is designed for Wisconsin real estate professionals, but some of the points that I'll make may help you as a consumer. But if you are a Wisconsin real estate professional and haven't completed your 2023-2024 continuing education course requirements yet, don't wait until the last minute. I'll post a link below that'll take you to the complete set of videos that'll provide the certification that you will need to renew your license in 2024. The deadline for completion is mid-December 2024. The duties that you owe are pretty much the same to a customer and a client, except when you're working with a client, you owe a duty of loyalty. Your duties are all defined in Wisconsin Statute 452.133, which means that it's the law, and if you want to work as a real estate agent in Wisconsin, you have to follow the law. Most of these duties are obvious, and I'm sure that you already know them, but you'd be surprised if you read some of the state's disciplinary orders that detail how agents fail to follow the rules. Sometimes you'll see total disregard for the rules. Sometimes you'll see that a licensee probably didn't even know the rules. That's why you're here today watching this video. The first section of the controlling Wisconsin statute lays down the rules regarding your duties to all parties to a transaction, okay? It doesn't matter if you're dealing with a customer or a client, the duties apply equally to both parties. The duties to all parties has seven basic rules. Let's go through each of them. When you provide brokerage services like selling a home as a listing agent or finding a home for a party as a buyer's agent, or even dealing with an unrepresented customer, the law requires you to be honest, fair, and act in good faith. Honesty, fairness, and acting in good faith are all the virtues that you need to maintain even if it means that you lose your commission if these virtues cause you your deal to fall apart. That's pretty straightforward. Most licensees always operate under these virtues, but some don't, and those very few are the ones who tarnish the reputation of all of us. But that happens in every profession. The second rule requires you to diligently exercise reasonable skill and care in providing brokerage services to all parties. Well, what defines reasonable skill and care? Reasonable skill and care in real estate refers to the standard of care and professionalism expected from real estate agents, brokers, or property managers when carrying out their duties and responsibilities. It implies that licensees should exercise a level of expertise, competence, and diligence that's considered reasonable and acceptable within the industry. When providing services or advice related to real estate transactions, the concept of reasonable skill and care entails several key elements, and here they are. Real estate professionals are expected to possess the necessary knowledge and expertise in their field. This includes understanding relevant laws, regulations, market trends, property valuation methods, and transaction processes. You should stay updated and stay updated with the changes in the industry and be capable of providing accurate and informed advice to clients. You should carry out your duties diligently and with attention to detail. This involves conducting thorough research, verifying information, and reviewing relevant documentation to ensure the accuracy and completeness of transactions. You shouldn't engage in any fraudulent, deceptive, or misleading practices. Failure to exercise reasonable skill and care in real estate can result in professional negligence or breach of duty, potentially leading to legal liability and financial consequences. Clients who believe that a real estate professional has not met the standard of care of reasonable skill and care 
may have grounds for filing a complaint or pursuing legal action to seek compensation for any damages incurred. The third rule requires you to disclose to each party all material adverse facts that you know and the party does not know or can't discover through reasonable, vigilant observation, unless the disclosure of a material adverse fact is prohibited by law. It's always better to practice disclosure than to not, but there are exceptions. What are some material adverse facts that are not required to be disclosed? What happens if you take a listing that's subject to a foreclosure action? Is that a material adverse fact that must be disclosed? Well, let's examine that. Here's the scenario. A person calls you to list their home. The seller discloses to you that a foreclosure action was recently filed and is pending. You did your due diligence prior to visiting the property by doing a market analysis and determined that the property's value is around $350,000. You then ask the seller, what's the balance owed on your mortgage? The seller responds, $150,000. So you determine that there's some breathing room of about $200,000 in equity or so before expenses. You take a look at the real estate condition report and determine that there are not any pre-printed questions regarding foreclosure. You only find questions related to the condition of the property. You also then look at a blank offer to purchase to see if the definition of conditions affecting the property or transaction include foreclosure actions. It doesn't. So you and your broker need to make a decision. Do you disclose that the property is subject to foreclosure in your MLS listing or any information that you distribute to prospective buyers? You need to analyze the situation. Let's analyze it. There's plenty of equity remaining in the property. There's a public record appearing on CCAP that indicates a foreclosure is in progress. There could even be a Liz Pendens that's been attached to the property. You determine, based upon your experience in the current market, that the home should sell at or above the listing price. And if you make the disclosure on your listing, buyers could think that they can offer much less to the seller, thinking that they can take advantage of the seller's situation. Now, some investors will look at the public record. They'll pull a title report, even. Both will reveal that the property is subject to foreclosure, but it would be very difficult to determine the mortgage balance. Most prospective buyers won't go to the courthouse and pull a copy of the summons and complaint from the civil clerk, of course, because that could be too much work. Now, under that analysis that you perform, is this really a material adverse fact? I'll give you a few seconds to make that determination.